Hi there, Mirella Mack here and welcome to the Proverbs Challenge where we read a chapter a day from the book of Proverbs. Today we'll be reading chapter 29. Now do get your Bibles and notebooks out. This one is going to be a great one. Before we begin, let's open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you with thanksgiving and praise. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. Thank you, God, for all that you've given us. Lord, you're a wonderful Father. You're gracious, you're merciful, you're kind, you are patient. We thank you for all that you are. We thank you for your mercy upon our lives. Lord, as we read your word and as we seek you, may we find you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Now let's begin the Bible reading. Proverbs chapter 29. New Living Translation Whoever stubbornly refuses to accept criticism will suddenly be destroyed beyond recovery. When the godly are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, they groan. The man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father. But if he hangs around with prostitutes, his wealth is wasted. A just king gives stability to his nation. But one who demands bribes destroys it. To flatter friends is to lay a trap for their feet. Evil people are trapped by sin, but the righteous escape shouting for joy. The godly care about the rights of the poor. The wicked don't care at all. Mockers can get a whole town agitated, but the wise will calm anger. If a wise person takes a fool to court, there will be ranting and ridicule, but no satisfaction. The bloodthirsty hate blameless people but the upright seek to help them. Fools vent their anger, but the wise quietly hold it back. If a ruler pays attention to liars, all his advisers will be wicked. The poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. If a king judges the poor fairly, if a king judges the poor fairly, his throne will last forever. To discipline a child produces wisdom, but a mother is disgraced by an undisciplined child. When the wicked are in authority, sin flourishes, but the godly will live to see their downfall. Discipline your children, and they will give you peace of mind and will make your heart glad. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild, but whoever obeys the law is joyful. Words alone will not discipline a servant. The words may be understood, but they are not heeded. There's more hope for a fool than for someone who speaks without thinking. A servant pampered from childhood will become a rebel. An angry person starts fights. A hot-tempered person commits all kinds of sin. Pride ends in humiliation. The humility. Pride ends in humiliation, while humility brings honor. If you assist a thief, you only hurt yourself. You are sworn to tell the truth, but you dare not testify. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice comes from the Lord. The righteous despise the unjust, the wicked despise the godly. Now that was the reading of Proverbs chapter 29. Let's do a deep dive and I'll share the verses that have made my heart flutter. (laughs) So the first one is verse 1. I discussed this with my husband last night. I generally ask him because I'd love to hear his opinion, right? And it reads, whoever stubbornly refuses to accept criticism will suddenly be destroyed beyond recovery, right? The Amplified reads, he who hardens his neck and refuses instruction after being often reproved, corrected, and criticized will suddenly be broken beyond repair. It's when you've been corrected. If you find yourself as someone who is refusing criticism, someone is telling you, this is not going to work. The singing career thing is not going to work. There's, there's a difference between people trying to kill your dream and people being honest with you. You need wisdom to understand the difference. And for you to see if criticism, like the last video I did, saying to see if criticism is valid, you need to take time to observe it. Don't be too quick to respond. When somebody tells you, I don't think you're great at this. I don't think this is the right relationship for you. I don't think this. I don't think that. You're not a great this. You may need to try that. When somebody comes through with criticism, right, you cannot immediately tell if it's valid, right? If it's correct, if it's necessary, or if it's just mean and unnecessary, right? You need to take time to go sit and say, okay, number one, where is this person coming from? Number two, do they care? Do they actually care what happens? Okay, I guess they care. 
as you evaluate, is it true? Could, could, could I be lying to myself? Am I delulu, right? But if you decide to be stubborn or hardening your neck, you know when you harden your neck, it's like this. And you can't turn because you're so, I want to do this. And someone is like, don't go that way. Go this way. No, this. It says that person, when you're that stubborn and hard-necked, you will be suddenly destroyed beyond recovery. There is no turning back. You will be suddenly, like I said in the other video, sudden has no time. <laughs> sudden does not announce itself. Sudden happens. Sudden does not tell people, I'm on my way to destroy you beyond recovery. It doesn't. And the thing is, because it's sudden, you cannot tell when, how long you can be stubborn for. Some of us can be stubborn for 60 years because you have that type of grace. Some of you, the first time you're stubborn, you're broken. It, you cannot say, okay, I'm gonna be as stubborn as so-and-so for the next four years, and then I'm gonna turn my life around and then do this. No, you don't have the same grace. You don't have the same chances. We should not measure each other according to, no, no, no. You can have role models, but how time and things happen were also unique. Please, do not have a, a sin bandwidth. I'm going to be sinning for so long and then I'm going to stop and turn into a Christian girl. I'm going to leave the pole. I'm going to leave the streets when I'm 22, when I'm 26. After I get this, this, this. You don't even know if the sun is going to come up tomorrow. How are you going to time your time on the streets? Are you mad? Are you stupid? You're a fool if you're doing that. If you're going to say, okay, so I'm going to be naughty and get what I get until it says suddenly you'll be destroyed beyond recovery. Like that. You could not have seen it coming. The next verse is verse three. The man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father, but he who hangs around, associates with prostitutes, his wealth is wasted. We're in the time where the enemy has managed to tell people that pleasing your parents is not good for your mental health, blah, blah, blah. Yes, there is mental health. I ain't gonna lie. There are areas where you're like, do not be people pleasing, do not worship your parents, like that, no. However, remember the commandments, honor your father and mother so it may be well with you, right? It means your parents want you to do well. No parent says, ah, oh, my child whom I've carried and taken care of, I want you to be shameful and disgraceful. I want you to sin and come to nothing. I want you to do all the wrong things. There is no parent who wishes their child to be nonsense, right? However, the enemy has managed to seep it in through words of freedom, do what you want to do, whatever. He he has managed to seep it in. He, he didn't come through and say, just honor your mother and father, make them mad, be unwise and hurt them. No, he says, try it out. Give yourself a chance. It's your life too. You didn't ask to be here. He All these little justifications. Right? That are not even in line with the word of God. Before you take on some things, just check where it is in the Bible. Quickly check before you take things on. Because what the enemy wants us to do is to cheat ourselves out of God's blessing. God's blessing is honor your father and mother so it may be well with you. The devil is like, nah, fam, do you, boo boo, so that you miss the blessing of God. He wants you to miss the blessing. God, God like literally told us what to do. We have the cheat code. And the devil uses the cheat code against us. And he says, mm -mm. if I tell them to honor that, no, 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 love who you want to love. Be free. No, your parents, they live their lives. This is your turn. <laughs> and then you cheat yourself out of the blessing from God so that it may be well with you. Meaning if you go against it, so that it may be horrible for you. That is what we're getting ourselves into. Be careful what the world is saying. Be careful of the subliminal messages. Try to listen to what is being pushed. What is this agenda? What is it? It says the man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father. Loving wisdom, what wisdom? Of God. Brings joy to who? The father. If you want to honor your father and your mother, check, check, love wisdom. If you want a long life, honor your father and your mother, love wisdom. It's, my husband says, the Bible, you can like 
use the equations. Like, you know, you can, what is it? Is it like reverse engineer? I don't know, my husband's smart. He says smart things. Anyways, you can figure this out by reading the word of God. You're like, God, I want a long life and I want things to be well for me. What does it say? Honor your father and your mother. Okay, how do you do that? The man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father. But if he hangs around prostitutes, associates with prostitutes, associates, not the one who prostitutes. Uh uh. If you associate, birds of a feather flock together. The whole thing about who you surround yourself with is important. Better to be by yourself than to be with nonsense friends. I know I just pointed at you. I'm so sorry. Like it was an important point. <laughs> Verse 5 quickly says, to flatter friends is to lay a trap for their feet. I quickly had to define, like, um, get the definition for the word flattery. I, okay, to be honest, I've been reading English for a long time. I had no idea. Most of us are speaking without knowing the true meaning of words. It says, lavish praise and compliments on someone, often insincerely with the aim of furthering one's own interests, Right? one's own interests flattery is a form of trickery because you're trying to get your way it doesn't say complimenting friends please compliment your friends tell them they look cute tell me like their shoes i like your hair you look good man you smell great however flattery is when you go a little step further for yourself right so now these are selfish friends they're flattering you it says it's like laying a trap at your feet when somebody is trying to get their own way. They're not even telling you the truth. They'd rather tell you, well, like, you're right. Ah, how could she do that to you? Yet you know in your head, I get it. But I don't want to tell you the truth because I need this from you. Don't be that person. I remember my husband used to say, say, be honest with your sisters amongst ourselves. He says, are you going to lie to your sisters so you keep gaining from them? Be honest be honest it, it came with certain scenarios and then them being honest with me because sometimes they're like if i tell her the truth i won't be able to ask for this uh -uh. Uh -uh. be careful about your friends verse 11 is another one that jumped out for me fools vent their anger but the wise quietly hold it back and i was like can't i vent i've been taught that the world has been teaching us <gasps> But it says the wise quietly hold it back. It doesn't mean they're suffering. Quietly holding back doesn't mean they're not saying it. They're just not saying it out loud. And I read somewhere, it says when fools vent their anger, it means not having a filter. It means not knowing like, okay, I shouldn't say this. This is not the time when you vent your anger. You just say everything, <laughs> verbal diarrhea. But it says the wise quietly hold it back. Quietly. It didn't say they hold it back and no, 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 no. In a moment where they're angry, they go, Usa. All right, I'm not going to engage in this right now. Whew. Okay, I'm going to hold this back. I'm not going to let this fire out. You let the fire out, you're burning people. You're hurting people and most likely yourself as well, right? can't let out fire and not burn yourself you will burn yourself in the end and have you ever spoken without filter and you were angry and when you were done when you sat down after everything had calmed down you regretted a couple of things but now you have to stand by them because you said it but you have regret if you're honest with yourself you're like i wish i didn't say that Oh gosh, that was so, oof, I shouldn't have said that. But you know what? There's when pride comes in. Pride then seeps in and says, ah, uh -uh, well, you said what you said. They must take you for who you are. It is what it is. They must thug it out. That's pride. That's how the enemy gets us. He makes us think, oh, as you're in the moment of thinking, oh my God, I shouldn't have said that. He's like, nah, it's cool, fam. It's cool. They must be strong enough. And you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're hardening your heart. Now, what are you doing? God, like making God resist you. You're pushing God further and further away from you. God doesn't like a pride heart. Proud heart. <laughs> a pride heart. God does not like a proud heart. The more you're like, 
I'm going to stick by what I said. It's me. I don't care. Even though God is trying to convict you and saying, you need to go apologize. You made a mistake. The more you're trying to hold on to your, I said it, my truth, <laughs> the more you push God further and further away from you. You are making God resist you. You're becoming repulsive to God. Then the last verse that I want to share is verse 25. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. Now, I had to do some quick research. I was like, what do you mean? When you respect people more than God, that is a dangerous trap. When you're worried about what people will say, <gasps> what are they gonna say when I break up with him? What are they gonna say when I do this? What are they gonna say when I leave her? What are they gonna say when I, Oof. okay. The last verse I wanna share with you is verse 25. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. When you respect the opinion of people more than of God. What are they going to say when I start preaching the gospel? What are they going to say when I leave this person? What are they going to say when I turn around? Ah, oh, what are they going to think of me? You are more concerned about what mere men, when I say mere men, I mean basic people that God made as well. You're regarding the thing that God made higher than the God who made everything. You are more concerned about people's opinion online. I can't share that online. Oh my gosh. You're so concerned about what people are going to say. You can't even share the gospel because you're like, what are people going to say? What? Over God? Trusting the Lord means safety. But fearing the opinion of man is a dangerous trap that you are setting for yourself. Don't be afraid of what people are going to say. Don't respect people higher than what God says. When people say, come, let's go, let's go drink. The cool girl called you for drinks. You were called to a meeting and everybody's drinking. But then you and God had an agreement that you ain't going to be touching alcohol no more. Now you have a choice. Are you going to try and look cool? Or are you going to say, ah, oh, me and the bottle ain't friends, but I, I can... I can, I can hang. I can be here. I don't have to drink. I don't need it. But everybody's like, oh yeah, we're going to do this. And you know that you and your God agreed no more of that. We're not going to be doing this. Then you regard people's opinion above what you and God have said, the truth you know that is within you. You decide, okay, I don't want them to think I'm not cool. As adults, we do that. Oh, don't even think it's a teenager's problem. 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds are worried about people's opinions. Mothers, fathers, grown people are worried about people's opinions. You find people wanting to please people. Are we not the same? Why would I try to please you? You're supposed to be pleasing what is higher. They may be important in terms of their roles here on earth, but your role is not to please them above that which God has set for you. Please, don't regard people higher than God. Now that brings the reading of Proverbs chapter 29 to an end. Now, do catch me again tomorrow for chapter 30. I can't believe we're one day away from chapter 31, the end of the Proverbs challenge. So exciting. I love you with the love of God. Catch you again.